Now, for part C, I hope that all this notation, this, all these concepts that I've gone through so far will become clearer. Because what we've got is that we're told that Tom took a ball and spun the appropriate coin and got ahead. What is the probability, we're asked, that he took a red ball? So in other words, if we phrase this question like this, we were asked to work out the probability that he gets a red ball given that he threw a head. Now, when you've got conditional probability like this, we should be aware of a basic formula. And I've gone through this in my tutorials, in fact, on conditional probability. So if you're unsure of this, do go back and look at those tutorials. But you'll see in your formula book, and as I've explained in the tutorials, that the probability of some event, let's say A given B, is equal to the probability of both events happening, A and B, divided by the probability of the given event, in this case B. So when we use this here, we're looking for the probability that both these occur, that is the probability of getting a red and a th head, and dividing this by the probability of the given event. So this will be probability of H. Now I hope you can see why using the appropriate notation makes this problem a lot easier because we've got the probability of getting a red and an H, okay, and a head. We've got it up here. It was these two probabilities multiplied together, going along these branches, in other words. So it's going to be 5 twelfths multiplied by 2 thirds. And then we divide this by the probability of H. And the probability of H we worked out. It was 41 over 72. And if you work all of this out, you'll find you get exactly 20 out of 41. And there's your answer.